Most people are beginners in, in Python. Who uh, of you never used the uh, Jupyter notebook? Who is using Jupyter notebooks less than a year? Okay, the first kind of use is the Jupyter notebook. So you have everything you score. So recommendations. This will be a hands-on thing, so I will be typing and you might type along or just watch, but typically it's typing and try not to be too fast. If you have a problem, to sign up the head, you'll look at your program. I have to look at the screen. Uh, you're supposed to install everything before and if you start installing now, you are a bit too late, you will miss a lot if it's very unfortunate. But you can always look at here and always make sure you here. Uh, I will learn to exactly the same thing. But the, the, the code information is actually yes, if you want to do this, just copy and paste it, which is not recommended. Uh, you want to have a muscle memory, it's just five people. It's not. Yeah. It doesn't put copy and paste it in the overflow, which is not a good method to use in the law. Just retype all the stuff. Okay. First of all, you should create a new directory, maybe a new directory. I call it your site by 2017. You might call it my like tutorial or something and then always work out of this directory changes. I'm using Kona and I made a new environment, which is Python 3.6. If you have why not, most of you don't have environments, if you have environments, you have environment. So the whole thing is you have to have Python school. I use Python 3.6. If you use the other version, it should be fine. You can you still use legacy Python, which is Python 3.7, which should work. Um, that's just a few different sizes already, so I think that's really Recommended. So make a new directory and then you type Python, Python should show up. That's the proof that Python is installed. There's not a very last question if you can update it, but it's fine. It's like three, six, one, so it's like this one. But it doesn't matter for this purposes and go out. And now we use Jupyter Notebook. So you type Jupyter and then Notebook. It is called Jupyter Notebook. You might have done this already from other, from other tutorials. And the thing is, you have to, you should be in this directory and you want to put the notebooks to end up, which is the easiest. So you're going to do a CD in this directory first, you just create it and then try to the notebook. And if everything is set up the right way, then um, the source should start and you should see something like this coming up in your directory. I have a file in there because I copied it there, and there's a download. Uh, if you have made a new directory, this thing should be empty. This would be empty. And first we're going to work in the browser. Two the notebook first it works in the browser and you're going to work in the browser. So everybody has this. Good. So I need to turn on full screen mode so you see more. And the first thing you create a new notebook. And I have a bunch of different notebooks. You might only have one choice because I'm making a Python notebook. And then you have a new notebook. You might have done this for other tutorials, I hope. Then you put the untitled, and that's an unfortunate for a notebook. That's why the first thing you click on it. You can call whatever you like. Uh, I don't know the intro or the three. And now, actually, uh, this will be the file name, and if you type something like in here, percent ls, which is one of this notebook magic, percent of it into the magic, then you will see in here this file that will be intro extension ip1nd, which stands for ipython notebook. This in the notebook was ipython notebook before, but they changed the name because it's now a different programming languages. And therefore, they change the name to Jupyter, they are divided into Python. Uh, could we maybe increase the font size by one step or? Yeah, so that's okay. Thank you. So, you see, the problem is if it's big like this, and the same you know, is always changing the screen and that's something that you can Okay, so that's a. Uh, uh, yeah. Um, I don't have this uh, menu and I don't have the inputs. Uh, but I have the other one. I have the other one. I have the other one. I have the 
Und der Fall, der die Logik jetzt im Bogen auch dabei steht. Okay, now this is from the title. You see, that's, that's a problem you can always the make on some other ways. The drug is based on this drug is on. You want to drop this map plot bit, and I just want to show you this. Next one, this is a very, very good library. By the way, you can. Also, not only um, not only Python, Python. So this is going to be on the Python. So if I type shift enter, by the way, it's shift enter is a uh, it's a way to execute the cell. If you want to know more about it, there are a lot of tabs, and one of them is keyboard shortcuts. So I have a picture of the keyboard shortcuts that gives you an overview of what all the keyboard shortcuts are doing. And the most important one. Fifteen inch enter, which is um, yep. It says you have to press the escape action shift and the time to work. And then uh, it, it's doing something. Run cell, select below that's the shoot then. Yeah? So I run cell and it creates a new cell. You have all enter, then it will break the cell normally. So this new one, the end it creates one with shift enter if you does it have some directions in the game. This really might look a different if it's an operating system. The shortcuts might look a different if you look at the keys. It might look like this one. Okay, you can also uh, change the cell content. See, I, I turned off I turned off the head of here actually, or the, the toolbar. And you can change the content uh, here. I can say insert cell path, which is useful. That's also the keyboard shortcut, so you can escape, and then you can change the, the mode to markdown, and then you can write something. You see, the influence is better than you have. And then you have this, which is markdown, you have also had for markdown. Markdown is very easy, you can do like five different things, like the hash rate gives you a head of first order, and you can make a nice notebook, and you can write it in the so you're supposed to write it on the notebook here. And now you can always have this. There's a shortcut if, you, if I say SK6, then I get a markdown cell with a header of level 6, and now I have a level 6 header. Yeah? Something like this, which is much smaller than this. There's a maximum number of levels of headers you can have 6, so you can have some of So, to be Good. We're going to spend most of the time in the IPython notebook. Method it also works from the command line or from the IPython prompt or from other tools. Uh, the commands for method are exactly the same. But when you run from the, the last thing will be animation. The animation, as I programmed, it doesn't work from the notebook. It runs from the command line. Because you need to like have the command line to need method or something to edit the script if you want. And then you can run something. One time that will pop up the window. Good. Let's get uh, to work with map.lib. When you work with map.lib in the notebook, you have two different modes you can run it. it there's another of those magic commands. If you type map and then tap, it expands automatically. And I set the mode to inline. If you don't do this, you won't see an output. It will be empty. It got something which is not nice. And inline means the output will be rendered as a PNG, as a picture, and you can see. Now, the first thing, of course, we have to do import. See, I'm always in that type in, and then tap the expense. So if you start typing something, and then the tap, it will need to suggest it's import, map.lib, and you see, now I get a long list, uh, dot, high plot, high plot, as PLT. That's a convention. You might see some of the conventions of pandas, uh, NumPy is typically important as NumPy as NP, pandas as PD, and this pipe code as PLT is very common. And very often when you see somebody they reference PLT, then you know it's a different pipe. has different ways to stop this. We use the simplest one first, the very interactive one. We will see later on there's a one that has there, more like object run, that make objects and references. Here we just do I just uh, turn off the toolbar and the headers will be get a bit more screen with the same interface. Okay, that's the first thing. And now we can do a plot. And of course we can also say import 
NumPy as it is, since we have NumPy. So who of you took part of NumPy tutorial today? So you know basic NumPy. If you, if you don't have to use NumPy for method lib, method lib is totally fine to use Python lists, but NumPy arrays of it. So you can say x equals NumPy a range uh, 2 to 11, which gives you um, a new array x is the numbers 2 to 10, so 2 inclusive uh, exclusive. And you can say y, and y is x squared to 1, and then you have the y. You need some data to plot. <coughs> and now you can say plt dot plot, which is the simplest one which produces a plot. If you don't do anything special, you get the line. Let's say x plus y, and when you do this, it plots. And when you turn a map to the in line, then you see the other. You see, it returns. This thing is a return. You see, if this is an other loop that works, you always get a return value. Not all my cells have return values. As you notice, if you do assignment, there's no return value because I assign this return value to x. And this is a statement here. And then you have a statement like this, there's no output. If you have an expression, x in this case is an expression, or here, so then there's a return value, then we see the return value, which is specific for either interactive prompt or iPython for the notebook. When you write a program, you do something like this. I didn't really tell you that the statement that seems that text was not a program. This doesn't make any sense to just write it. Because it's just using object Y and a reference and pass the link it. But here you see that. OK. And then you see that's a list of line codes, and you get the output. So you get a kind of a decent output. And the default is that all the axes are scaled in way. The default colors are changed with the zero like this now. If they, 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 they see some more tutorials and see some older blue and red colors, these are these colors that they nice of, they, they changed this, they did some research in uh, color, how colors work, and they have some new colors. This would be the, the simplest plot. And now the easiest way to experiment, you can do something with your plot. You can do something with your plot. That's, that's my plot. And you can do different things. You can say plt dot, and you can say uh, x label, for instance which is a function, don't assign. And then you assign the x label by accident, then it won't work, so it's a function, and then you can write something like x as right. You see, if I do this, now down here, x as Again, plt dot tab gives you a long list, whatever was possible, you see the long list, you see the small icon, you can scroll down, right? and most of the time, after while the name gives you a hint. You don't know what, what things mean, just click on it with a question mark here, and then press shift enter, and then it gives you uh, yeah, there's no good string, but there's no good there. Except to, to the next one, say y label, dot string, with a question mark, and then you get down here in the new window. By the way, if this is too small, you can also you can just click on this one. When you click on this one, it opens in a new window, yeah, and then it gives you the help. So I have to go back to my window, so I click on it. So this would be, uh, and by the way, if you do question marks, and if the source code is available, this is a pure Python module, it will even show you the source code, which is available right now, so if you want to, you can look at the source, and this is the source code, which doesn't give you much because it's just a source code, yeah. Yeah, so, but it gives you the help also. So this is typically where it gives you the help, and then it tells you something, because the signature is not very nice, you might have seen this one people box, it means it takes an unspecified number of people and of people documents. And if you don't know what it means, so we can see it through, but then the help string tells you, uh-huh, um, I have something I can specify, font size and double the alignment, and so on. And they have the default values. All of them have to use the default values. Yeah, we have to set that for the in line. So you have to say, if you don't set inline, uh, you, you set the back end. There are, there are multiple back ends. So MapProtect supports GTK, WS G, and GK inter as back ends for the three back end. But you can have certain back ends. If you don't set the back end, it just plots it somewhere where you're in CSV. So it does not. So you have to set map inline. This would be the first mode. So how the default name is 
exactly the problem is that that must do so. Um, yes, yeah, so there's a lot of ways you can change pretty much everything, but we have to find it. So, yeah, okay. So now I change at the y-axis and so on, so you can set a lot of these. And see, I make a new plot every time. And that's the advantage I can just very quickly. So you have a title, a title, and you, you can write something. Title then put it capitalized like in your so, uh, And you can do that if you want to in strings typically. So if you know LaTeX, LaTeX, uh, then uh, you put it all the way around, backslash, and then you can use math mode, math mode and LaTeX, and then you can use all this numerical <coughs> formulas. And this would be just pi, like a great effort. But you can also use. Uh, in words, uh, math mode supports right. And the work for ending that's is great. Michael access the work and little bit of different text you can write with it. So this would be one thing that there's other options you can say like plt dot which is also a function board. So the API admittedly is not very funny. Written by a person who does very efficiency on such programmer and didn't use much Python. And there also the API doesn't. This would be a read on probably that would look a different, but that's the way it is. And um, now you have um, a grid, for instance. Okay, this will be the first plot, and it looks kind of decent already. And you can save it, so if you want to save it, you can save it. So so far, we only work with one. We see later on, you can have multiple plots, and you can have explicit reference and different plots. Right now, you only have one active plot, and you have an implicit reference to whatever the plot is put as Now you can say save thing, and you can save your, your plot, and you can say OK, my plot one. And typically, you can specify the type, but you just write the extension. And uh, that's what we figure out of one. So you can save the PNG or other formats, you can also save it as SMT. You can do this and you do LS here. So you see, I did LS with percent sign, which is a magic command. If I just type LS, and there's no Python name defined as the name LS, and that will get the Jupyter look of the report back as it looks for the percent LS. If you're if you're interested in what actually it's doing, then you can use history. Uh, something like this. And you and I chose it uh, for something great. Um, input history. Input history or input to 22. And you export it. So you can export the cell, and you can see actually that it says get I, get I, I wouldn't write out of books, but this LS actually translates to get I, 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 and for the background to some Python. And then you see the input. And now we have this method. You can look inside this any kind of browser. You can also use the SVG, which would then be uh, uh, a vector of graphics. The PNG is pixel, and you can also specify the UPI. So if, you, if this is not big enough, then you can say PPI, and you can specify you want to 300 or 600 or 1200 PPI, so 1200 PPI. And then you have highest resolution, of course, it doesn't make sense if you put SDP as an extension, then PPI, then you better than you it as an extension. So now we have the plot same. And that's also the method, of course, now if you want to save a lot of plots, you just write a loop, exchange the data, and save a bunch of. PNGs. That's actually a good method if you want to make a video. That's probably the easiest one. Just make a directory and say the plots have 001, 002, 003, and so on. And then just have an impact. This digital value of the video, and that's pretty easy. You can do it if you nice yourself, and then have an impact has tons of options to make nice videos. Of course, you have to change the data to make your nice frames. Okay, this would be the basic plot. Uh, and keep it for now, and I just copy the whole thing. Now I'll show you a little bit how you can do more properties. So just work with So you can also do a plot, and you can specify a label, which is a good idea, typically. You can say label. Mm -hmm. 
So I make this one, and I can make a second plot. So I'm just say okay, and I say okay, uh, plus 20. It's a NumPy array, and I add plus 20, it adds 20 digital numbers. If you have a list, you cannot do this. You would need a list comprehension or something. And then, And you do this, nothing changes, only that you have two plots. You see the takes the whole code is you change both immediately later on. But now you can say uh, plt dot legend, and then it puts a legend right there. So you can specify a lot of options for the legend also, like the position and stuff. Here it puts a legend and it takes a label. That's probably the best way of doing it, just label those those plots. And then you don't have to map it. You can also, if you build label it, explicitly give a list of strings to the legend, but then you have to take care that those names also apply to so plots that yeah. the order is metal here. You go by you don't have to put the name there because it's the password. So now let's change the mode. Now to see how this works, I can say map plot tip. Notebook. There's a number of back end, and this is a specific back end. So, and I copy my whole thing from here, just for detected reasons, so I didn't give any do it yourself, which is tricky, but we, because I will upload this notebook later on, you will get it. <coughs> and then I do this, and you won't see anything that's, I don't know, you have to do the whole thing again, you can go in again, shift enter, shift enter, and then you see the problem. I don't know it's kind of a pack or something. It has something to browse. So you always have to execute all cells twice. And you see it. I execute the cell, you see it. Uh, this is 12, cell 26, this is cell 29. 27 and 28 don't exist anymore. So they're not in the notebook, but they're still in the history by the way. So yeah, if you look in the history, if I look at the history, then you can find all these inputs that are still there as long as the code is alive. But the cells don't exist in the notebook anymore. And then you change it exactly and execute it twice, then you should see something like this. So that's an interactive mode. And now we have a bunch of buttons start here. And this is, if you go uh, over it and wait for a few seconds, then you see a help. We have zoom, and you can zoom in. For instance, if I click on it, then the Cursor changes, and now I can zoom in. You see? And see, if I, since I had it, the default for the location of the legend is best. Now I changed my plots, and now my line, this orange line here, would go right through the legend. That's why the legend is moving to a different place. And if you, but then you have, you have this one, this is uh, pen, which means now the cursor changes. If I move it around, you see now the legend is jumping around because it has a location best, it always finds a way where it doesn't get cut by a line. So sometimes if, if everything before the blind obviously doesn't work, then there's no way to the legend. You can also play, place a legend outside if you want. You, you have um, sorry, could you explain how you get to this point? Yeah. yeah, so you have to go here and execute the cells twice. Shift enter, shift enter, go up there, shift enter, shift enter. But otherwise you can see why. So you need a, typically, uh, if you're Windows, you have Internet Explorer. Uh, it might not, everything might not use Firefox. So Firefox works, Firefox, Chrome, work, Edge, might work, I don't have Microsoft. In I know Internet Explorer, you always have to click in the cell again. Here I can just type, and I come to the next cell, and Explorer will move the mouse to the cell. It somehow doesn't activate the next cell for some reason. So my experience, Firefox and Chrome on Windows is better. So far, I mentioned Windows. So you need a kind of a recent browser that supports sockets, web sockets, and all the browsers that are kind of useful. You should use a little browser in general. And why is this? So this is interesting, uh, but you see, yeah, you can also now click. If I can click on this one. Then it stops interaction and it freezes a picture to stay you zoomed in. So you can focus it and okay, now I want this, and now you have this picture and it freezes right there. So that's Typically, I prefer this inline mode because it's a bit, otherwise, you don't 
the closest into another project plot is this old window, the RAM analog old window, they change the old one, which is kind of different for those of typically have for inline for experimenting. Uh, if you want to zoom in, you should be more soccer than this. So now we have a decent plot already. So I, I go back to my inline mode. You could have to, you can keep it, but typically it's a bit easier to do because I can make setup to setup to setup. So you can this. So you see uh, what I have here in my script. Okay, there's a bunch of other things you can do. So we have this plot here, and I just keep copying. So of course, otherwise, I change the cell again and again and again, and you can see the means. So you can specify <laughs> properties. Properties are very important. In a very short way, so the name Matplotlib, uh, you might guess it comes from Matlab. Matlab is a commercial package that's used a lot in America. Since a lot of courses, so I think of change of Matlab. And therefore, a lot of things are very similar to Matlab. So if you're a Matlab user, you can see a lot of similarities. And the easiest way to specify properties of a line is a straight. There are other ways of doing it. So the easiest way would be to say, I want to have a red line. So you could put an R. There are many different ways of specifying protocols. The simplest one would be one letter. But that's only like five or six. But now you see, it's red. It used to be blue. And now that this is red, the next one changes to blue. They have some kind of scheme there. So you are the red, the next one I don't make one. It's called again zero. This would be one. And then you can also specify that you want to have a dashed line. That's a, if you look at the documentation, there's a long table of symbols. Many, many different symbols. And I call them the dotted line, dashed line, dashed of the back ten. If you do something like this, now you get that. And you can also add the markers. So you can have a symbol for the markers, like a plus. Uh, no. Let's let's make the, the lowercase O makes it a little sort of. Now you get the marker at every place where you could take a point. Created numbers two to uh, two to eleven, which is nine numbers, and you should you can't you should see nine points. You can have many points, you can also there's also the mark every there's many, many more arguments. This line can be much, much longer. You can achieve the same thing. Being more explicit, say color. Now you can set the color, which you could say, okay, I want to have uh, yellow, and now it makes yellow pieces. It's kind of yellow. Looks more yellow. So you might, that's one way of doing it, but you can also say light. And so this color digests. Or a lot of different inputs, and one of them would be there's like eight or four names. These are typically the names, there's also in the documentation, but the names you would going to be which are defined in HTML as all names, and we just use the English word, like crimson, or that's sometimes very long color names, and never saw before. And that would be one way to specify it. But you can also specify a tool with this RGB, so if you don't want to find the explicit, you'd like to find a calculated color. Then you just add two you say 0 0.5, 0 0.5, 0 0.5, and it should be kind of rage. Uh, and so now I have 50% relatively even uh, RGB green and blue. And you do not have to change the numbers between 0 and 1, but you change the color, so you can make the one out of it, then it uh, gets blue on. Yeah? Because now the blue is one, and the other one is half, and so on. So you can change the color. But that's, you can also use a hex string, like this, you, you, you see CSS, they are commonly they use a hex string, which is exactly the same as this tuple, just a different uh, formatting of the numbers, and then you can create it. This three or four different ways to specify color can be used anywhere other than value. This is more object oriented, you can use a keyword argument, that's a keyword argument, so if you look at the plot, there's many, many optional keyboard arguments. Or the short way would be using this kind of cryptic string. Um, the post, post ways are possible. And you can also actually, when you add the plot, add properties later. So that's one way of adding properties. So, uh, if you anti just raise your hand, this is supposed to kind of follow along. And I copy the whole thing. So you can do a few things. So, yeah, I didn't. Yeah. I have a question concerning this 
state of the relationship. Yes. Um, so my guess is the fact that this is chopped into pieces and that yeah. process yeah, yeah. different uh, areas. Uh, can you somehow configure the wrong thing by doing that? So is it sometimes easier to make the explicit statements, make it hard? It's, it's easier to read. So if you, this is something if you pay into active in the month in the past. Then you see that. That's, that's, that's my take. Okay? So you use it, then you read into active, you do some free majority, and you look at the output of the thing, and you know what you're doing. That's okay. If you want something that is a little longer, use it even That's what I would use. So it's a bit more typing, but it's easier to read later. Unless you do a lot, and you, it depends on the audience. It's just for you, also other people that use method with a lot, then the screen might be okay. <coughs> if, you, if somebody doesn't know much, the key would argue it's much easier just because there's score and you know that, that must be a call. Yeah, my question was from the word out. Is it in the background always only one solution? Yes, that's yes, true. But even that, that doesn't work, it gives an exception that there's no option for this. Okay. So there, there are unique symbols for the marker, they are unique only for markers, there are unique symbols for the lines, and for the letter, for the, for the colors over the letter. But there's no R for 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 more. So that's the you need. If you use some, you can actually change the order. So there's no problem. You can do whatever you want. Yeah, that's the next seconds. And it will be for you to change the order because each sign is unique as well. And you can put something that doesn't exist. And then you get an exception that comes on and tells you unrecognized character R strings and gives you. Exception for something. Exception for something. It's really something wrong, not exactly what, right, but at uh, least it tells you the R is wrong. So the R is wrong, so you change the R. That's easy. So you're totally free to use the order, whatever you like. Um, so there's always a thing I'm going to do something quick and dirty, but it's kind of implicit, or you want to have more explicit. This was deep. More, more Pythonic. Yeah, so it was, uh, you might know this, that uh, implicit, explicit doesn't implicit somewhere then, yeah. <laughs> and that, that's the key. And also should be one, and obviously one way to do it, so it should be one, and probably only one obvious way to do it, and not that we have at least 10 ways to do it. And always, this always is quite surprised that somebody has to check yet another way to do this. Because you have so many options to put this together. Okay, now that's what I did here. Uh, and now there's many different ways to get the explicit reference. I didn't, didn't do it as throw away the reference, but you can also say an axis is a PLD get current axis. This is a very method like command. And now I have this axis. So uh, I just, I can delete the server, by, by the way, escape DB. For the nine yeah, users or any users. And then I have an X, which is my axis. And now I can uh, uh, go with this axis. And I can actually. Uh, this would be one way of reading, the other way actually would be better. So if I add a plot, so I could say here. Lines one. Yeah. So uh, this always gives you back a list of course. Of course, you can actually, instead of this, okay, let's go like this. See now lines one, if I do this, uh, then lines one is a list of uh, plots, and I did only added only one. You can also add two plots. You can say plot. I could use two plots in one. Say x, y, x, uh, y plus 20. That's what I would but I did before. So you can call it like this. You see now, uh, let me say PLT plot. Now I get a return, I get a distance 2. So you can add plot, plot 2 of them. The problem is if I use keyword arguments, also will get, get the same. I can use different colors, at least not in this way. You can use a string though, but you can use a color key. They will be labeled. You can label that because you have one label. I'm sure you can try this. So, uh, yeah. Could you show again the plot of the object? Yeah. So, uh, so when you say plot always returns a list of plots, so it would be easy. So I didn't bother to just show the way, but you can get a reference to this. 
So the plot returns a list of plots. In our case, this list contains only one element. But still a list. So now, if you want to have the plot, we just do a normal list operations. And now, if you reference, now you get a, get a plot. So this would be my plot P. So I'm lazy, I just do P. So now that P. And I do this, so I copy this in one step. I just copy this because it gets kind of a so I have P. And now I can say P dot set underscore and then tap, and then gives me a long list of stuff that I can do. So all this most of the objects have the set underscore something method. Many of them, many of them. <laughs> uh, and these are kind of created dynamically more or less, and then it tells you what you can set. So you can say like set column, and now I can set the column. Now, uh, you see, I did something, but something is not right. See, so now, my eyes plot the screen, but there's something wrong with my plot. Who sees what's wrong with my plot? So the legend, the legend is still red. Because it plots, it, it prints a logic, the legend is red, and then later on I change the, the color and makes it, makes it, it doesn't make any sense. So, rule of thumb, always put the legend at the end, otherwise, you might end up with very strange problems. And now I'm just watching this. This is the way it works. It doesn't undo it at all. You have to unpaint it. It's just once you, it's like a piece, once you write something in a piece of paper, it's there. It's not erased in this case. So you have to be careful. So rule of thumb, always put the legend box. Otherwise, the legend might not be going to come. It doesn't make a lot of sense, actually, what I did here, to, to, to set the code right here, and then to set the code to green. In most cases, so it's yeah, so when I make credit this plot, it returns a list of all plots. In this case, this list contains only one plot. Yeah? So this returns a list. And I, I call this one lines one. So because every plot for me is a line. And this is the first one with the plots. And here I I just access this normal indexing in my plot the first one, which gives me the first plot which is P, and this P, once you execute the cell, you can see P dot, and it gives you a long list, <laughs> so you can set something, and I can change the property of P. And here I say, okay, make it dot P. So what do we have multiple plots in the same one, in the single one, so then you have Yeah, so that's what I did up here. So if you have multiple, now you say, okay, that's my lines. Yeah. See, now it's lines. <coughs> uh, that would be one way of doing it, but you could also say uh, line one, comma line two, which is two for unpacking, you should now this one. This assumes that this plot returns exactly two. If it returns only one or three, we get an exception. So now I have this two for unpacking thing, and then you can say line one plot set something, and you can say set uh, line style, yeah? and I can say line style column, and now change the line style, which is the column is made for the line words. To get this, uh, the problem is if I, if I define line one and line two, without executing the cell, let's say line one, two, dot, you don't see anything, we have to execute the cell first, so the, the kernel knows that that object exists. It's a little change with the notebook. You always have the notebook itself, which is in the browser. We have a kernel of the command line. And if you don't execute the cell, the kernel doesn't know anything. So I can type, like all the markdown cells, I type, the kernel doesn't know anything about it. It only knows about the type of If I don't execute the cell, meaning, and I type in here, if I do something like this, the kernel doesn't know yet because it doesn't know nothing. Only when I execute the cell, you see a number, which is an indication that it's not executed, then the common knows. Therefore, markdown cells, as you can see here, they don't have a number. Yeah, because the common doesn't know about it. And this number, if I raise a line number, but it's not, it's not, it's not just sort of line numbers. 
but there are no in number, and therefore, if there is no in number, the, the kernel doesn't go. So if I turn on the proof on, you have three different types of, four different types of, uh, I haven't actually marked out, this is a subset of markdown. Uh, we have code, which is the board, which is Python in this case, it could be something else. If you use a different programming language, and so the, note, the Jupyter notebook supports about 60 languages, so you should find any useful language that should be a Chrome. So I use it from Haskell, it has very good GDR, and on the you can see you find whatever, whatever it has. And then the code will be this language for sure. And you have Markdown, you can have raw, which is just text, it doesn't do anything. And Markdown and raw with numbers and stuff. So that's everything you can do is a group on the menu, you can do this shortcut somehow. So you see now this is a wall and if I do shift enter, yeah. but it doesn't doesn't send it to the phone because it's just the part of the system. Maybe it doesn't, but it, it's not not it's not Python, so it doesn't get that executed. Okay, now we have our cell and we can set properties. That's one way of doing it. And just for uh, completeness sake, you can also say plt dot set property, uh, and then you can hand in the object, and then you can say, okay, I want to set something else, and I can say uh, uh, marker marker style, I guess, uh, I think that's marker style is plus, and then P, it should be P. And it's so, let me see. But now it's just, I forgot one thing. Second. No, no more. So now it's a plus. But more has bad more. So here, obviously, because it's, it uses a strange arcs, if you look at PLT, that's a problem. Just why it's like this. If you say set P, Question mark. Yeah. You see this arcs and keyboard arcs, which is very unfortunate for help because <coughs> yeah, I take any position on any keyboard arguments, that doesn't help. Yeah. So that's why this program, the program help would be the signature, and if there's nothing, there's nothing to help. And we have to reach from here for <coughs> the property. Huh? But they actually are the same as if you look at your line line one, P dot set underscore and everything after the underscore is typically what you can supply there to keep it. So you have to go around. It's not it's not very personal that it's like you that you supplying the server so it's just for its completeness sake maybe you want to do something like this. Who knows? So the problem is very important. Now you can make big useful plots and the problem is there are many, 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 many objects. Hundreds of options for the of Nobody really can remember all of them. Because if you typically you don't want to have hundreds of types of plots, you want to have a few plots you need, and you have to find out the options once and then you know. And I myself always have people do my own scripts for that. We just go what options you need to go for because they don't use all the time, just the caps. But the way typically uh, things work, so you go and I make the new IP code is net perfect that side, net perfect all, yeah. And now to make this one. So and the this nicest product, nicest uh, tab here is gallery, and if you go to gallery, then you see hundreds and hundreds of plots. And that's what I call accepted driven programming. So you go in here and you look at something what you want, like this. Yeah? So you go in here and you see this is a spot, to the sign functions on top and they're transparent and they show you the, the code. You will find, find different styles and this, this is sort of things are kind of different people you find quite a different styles how to do it. And I showed you. So they use the first this is just producing the data to use the in space which is yet another way to make data. So he says I want to have everything from zero to two times five. 
is 500 steps. That's not right range. You get 500 data points uh, in this range from two from zero to two time. And then you y one is sine x and y two is sine three x. That's it. See, but now this is a subplots, which is some different way, yet another different way to create a plot I didn't show you. This one gives you a plot for the figure, the comfortable figure. And it gives you an axis, and then you have this axis, and you can say x is still. So, so far we used only plot, but there are many different other plots you can use. And you can say x is still, and it fills it, and you say, okay, I want to fill it between x and y1, which is blue, and x and y2, which is red, and the alpha point is three. So alpha means transparency. If you put alpha 1, then everything is okay. If you put alpha 0, then it would see anything. And it makes kind of pastel icons. Can you use the subplot um, as a matter for making like, several plots? Yeah, yeah, you become the subplot. So you can use subplots if you want to have as many plots arranged like in a table like fashion, then you use subplots. Mm -hmm. You can add as many subplots as you like. Um, here it makes only one subplot. So far we just use plot which makes subplot one one one. So far we focus on one. So you can have many, many subplots. And you can also, if you like, use a concept called axis and you can place it plot whatever you like. The subplot makes it very nice and the grid to out. Okay, so in this thing is just copy this one. So I don't need the import anymore. So now the problem overrides my x. Here it overrides my x. Uh, I just can call this x2, and this x2 does override my x next time I'm going to call something. So, if I do this, by the way, this PLT show I don't need here. This is needed when you run it as a script. When you run from the command line, you copy this into a file, and you need this PLT show, otherwise, nothing shows up. But now, I'm going to do something like this and get the error rate because I've got the x2 here. Now, this. So I mixed what I renamed my x, so of course in one place, x, x2, x2. Okay, so if I change all my x, x2, just I don't want to write my x, then you see I get this plot. And now you can drop your way from there. You have a kind of feature, and you have this one. Now you can experiment. So if, if, I, set, if I set it to 1, the alpha, which is very nice, then I mean it's okay. If I set it to 0, then it was another. It's totally transparent. So one, go one, you still see something. So you can see it. Instead of go nine, I would be. You can see it. Trying to So here, since I have two plots, I get the same alpha proportion that we would want to have different alphas, then you would have to make two plots on top of this also. That's if I are um, And they use a stick, they use a string, and this string will first as a first plot, and this string will first as a second plot. And also there's other different plots. You can have different kind of patterns of pretty much everything. Yeah. And there's many more. Um, Many more plots, so if you go back to the just scroll through, and there's hundreds and hundreds of all types of plots, so they can so you want to get a little bit of line styles, and there's always a source code of the plot. Yeah? And you discover plots, you can also draw stuff and and on. A lot of <laughs> statistical plots, histograms, violin plots, box plots, all kinds of stuff that you can do. And yeah, histograms again here. And there are simple plots and pretty sophisticated plots. You can also work with uh, these pictures, like a photo, and you can say, okay, cut a circle. That's a command, cut a circle. It's used to be a normal photo, you just make it run. You cut a circle. And so, then you have different type of information, like that's in the circle point, included. You can have steam plots, flow or something. Uh, pretty interesting. This is nice, uh, playing pie chart. You see, so you have this micro and you see that it's loaded, and that's it. This is the first one, it's just the data, so you have to have the data somehow. So the, the labels, the sizes, and then you see this is explode, this makes this, this orange yellow thing here come out. So, so 
they have x code if you like, and then you just you say pi, again make up, let's say pi, and then you say explode, okay, labels, uh, here you can specify the format, and they still they use this percent style uh, text formatting, you might know, string formatting. And since you want to have the percent sign, you have to escape the percent sign, hence the double percent. Works. And that means I want to have a 1.1, 1 .1. so I have one digit long and one less than uh, something, which makes sense. And then inch dot angel, and also I have to set, if I don't set it, then you couldn't get it, get the egg. That's what you want to have around, typically. That's why you set X and Y. Otherwise, it kind of scales it and then you get this kind of like shape. And so, yeah, you can find your way out, um, you can play around with it, and you get this kind of place. Of course, you can also set alpha and make this very good. So you can do the same thing. Uh, the same pattern once you have this, you can typically guess the names. So that's pretty much it. And there are many, many more, many, many more, many more. Um, but it's sophisticated, this is nice, so you can use so You can do this. But thank you here, and you can make a comparison formula. And this is just right there. Here, that's it. You typically use a raw string because you have to use backslash, and if you don't get, if you don't use a raw string, you might end up with like four backslashes, which is not useful. But sometimes you might too. If you use a raw string, you can get a regular two, not if you use four, which makes it hard. So most of the time, maybe I have a R, here we can use a raw string. Okay, that's a property, so you put it into the Okay, so that's the basics. Uh, a few more things I would like to show you uh, is how to, how to put text, how to put text very quickly, and then how to arrange subplots. These are the main features. Okay, so uh, text, SK2, gives you this one. There are uh, different ways of putting text. So I make a very simple plot. So it's um, stripping away everything we did so far, just X and Y, because you might be my plot. Yeah. Again, you see the return value as you put the list. This is the object. You see this return value comes back. If you don't assign it, uh, by the way, if you, if you don't like this output, that's a good usage of the semicolon because the semicolon adds a new line at the end, and then there wouldn't be any return value, and then it's a plus sign. Let you write the percent, you know, we always have this noise in there. Again. Typically, you can always go to the other semicolon. Sometimes you need to put a Python script where only one line fits and you need a multiple line. But that's the case that we use those values. It's just for some we like to attach files. Okay, there are different ways of writing text. Uh, so you can say PLT, each dot text. And there are different coordinate systems. I have a list here, there's like five, six different coordinate systems based on pixels, based on data, based on chaos. So we have actually two main ones. One is the data, so that means my coordinate system goes from 0 to 10, you know, from, from, from 1, whatever it's here, from 2 to 10, and from 0 to 100. And the other one will be the figure, and the figure will be the whole thing. Here you don't see the figure too much. If you do it on a command line, there's really the window that pops up that will be a figure. And that this goes from 0 to 1 and 0 to 1. So we always start 0 in the lower left hand corner. But it's a coordinate system as you see it here. As opposed to some we have typically we have 0 on top left. You print a page that makes sense. If you want to draw some data, you want to have done that. You have to be careful, but otherwise you might. Okay, you have text and you can say I want to have some text at position 5 and position 16. And you see, it puts the text right there. And now it actually makes sense to go back, <coughs> escape A, choose the cell, go back to a matplotlib, matplotlib notebook, notebook mode, do the same thing, now it works for the first time. And now I can do this pen, you see if I pen around. So now I put my text here, this, Data coordinates, and that's why when I move around, it moves around. Of course, that's, that's okay. This is different from what's called the figure text, fig text, fig text, 
you can specify here. Now, now I have to put from 0 to 1 to 0 to 1. So if I say 0 0.2 and 0 0.6, Of course, you can supply it on the top sizes and colors and all kinds of stuff. You can do this here. And now, you see, and if I do this panning again, you see the figure of X stays put because the figure doesn't change. I change the location of the coordinate system, that's why I smooth it around, but the figure of X stays there. But you can also place figure of X outside of this coordinates. So I can say something like this one point. It's supposed to show up somewhere here. Maybe it doesn't work this way. Okay. Let's do this in line. The work that I used to do this. Yeah. And then you can place text outside. See here, if you do this, now you see it's outside because now I'm 10% outside of the window. It works here, it, it, might, it might not make sense if it's outside of the window, it's there, but you don't see it. It doesn't matter. It's here. The problem is when you save it as a figure, it might not show up, but there might be an option to set it up in there. Yes, wait. Uh, yeah, so something you can be careful. And then you calculate something like this and you go outside. Uh, this could be something if you want to place a legend outside. Because typically that before the legend is placed inside. But if it covers a lot, you can put it outside and make it space bigger than the You will find the rest of the sun. That's text. And yet another way of doing text. Yet another way is annotation. So I can have an annotation. And the annotation I have to add to so now this would be the way you get the access which I had before. I said you have to get access to the yeah. uh, This is all one. They have this access here, that's this access thing. They edit. That's all nice. Okay. You see, they say subplots, you get an explicit reference to the figure. So you can do something with the figure object, which is a background, we can do background for stuff. And this would be the access. So the figure is a whole. Then the axis is my uh, thing where I can plot it. You can have multiple axes. You have subplot. This is like a subplot. Huh? The things. Yeah, the axis and axis. You can see on the floor. It's kind of a little bit strange. Get it? Um, uh, get current axis. It's one way. Turn it into accuracy. So now I have it. And now I can say axis annotate. And I can annotate. So again, now I go by. Uh, have to check so now it's now it's different. The other ones have a coordinate source and then text. This one has a text source and then coordinate for some reason. Okay, important. Mm -hmm. And then you can specify two locations. You can specify location of text and you can specify location of the arrow. So, so the, 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 the arrow should point at x, y, and you specify two coordinates. And let's say I want to have it at 6 and 35, because you can calculate this one, 6 and 35. So 6 is x, 35 is y. And then you have x, y, text. x, y, text, so this would be different coordinates. And you can specify that you want to have text. So let's say I want to have 6 and so say 8. And 20. And then you can have the uh, arrow properties, arrow prop. And this is finally enough as a dictionary. The dictionary stuff, of course, you have to have some sort of keys in there, the other that makes sense. And one of them is face color. And again, there's a long list of prop, so yeah, face color. Typically, you can use uh, it. Like the others in the British way. Props, not props. Yeah. And then I say red or blue or something. Yeah. You see now it puts it. Yeah. And there's, if you look at this uh, gallery, you, instead of having you can have other properties, you can have totally different arrows that have totally different shapes. But this can be useful. 
So if, you, if you're able to calculate this important point yourself, then you can put this power of automatically to something. Just a bit. So you can, again, you can make it much longer, it can be 10 lines long, and specify all kinds of stuff that you can use. So that's the way of text, of course. As I said, you can always By the way, in Python 3, you can do the same thing as Python 3, or you could, uh, most of the Unicode characters are the Python names, and those who have something interesting, if you type something like this and then you press the tab, it translates it to something like this. So, because you don't have to find a way to input this thing. It's just the input thing. But now you can do the same thing. And you can do So if you want to write, you're free. So if you want to, you can write it in source code in Chinese. You can have to read it in English and stop it. And then you can write Chinese. Or you can, French, you can put all the nice accents in the code. Put them here, if you want to. Or German second the open lines, the other sources. Okay, and this is just a little bit, but this is just a little bit. You can use it in any editor. It doesn't have to be notebook. As, as, as soon as you get to input the Unicode character, that I'm getting something for the editor. If you want to use it, a different question. So if you have a very mathematically inclined audience, that might, that might be okay. If you have normal audience and some normal library, that's not so Other people might make the input of thing and just copy paste, which is a very common thing. I always get people, even as some people have names, I can then type the characters over the code. Okay, that's something you can do. That's text. Uh, I won't skip now, but uh, the next one. Fix so that you can from the fix. Maybe more important is the subtle concept. That's called the subtle concept. But the material, it's much longer than one and a half hours. But the, the thing is, as you see, there's many, many details. And I get something wrong. So. Uh, subplots. And I'll show you how to make subplots. There are different ways of creating subplots. So you can actually add subplots. I can say plt dot subplot. And so far what we did, so implicitly, one, 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 we mean create one row, one column, one subplot. Or subplot on the one. This would be longer than empty. But you can also say, I want to have two rows, three columns, and I want to have plot number one. This would be plot number one. For the sub one. So now you can also copy it, okay. This would be sub six, so it can be more than this, two times three six. Now we will see pretty much how this works. You see, this is number one, this is number six. Let's put another one to read and see how this works. So you can uh, either put a comma or you can put it together. As long as it's one digit, then you can put it together. Let's say number three. Because we do the same thing. Obviously, it's more than nine, then you cannot get you to come up. And now you can count. Uh, this is one, this is two, we don't have to profit. This is three, this is four. You see, uh, you can write a loop and you can create, you can have plots. And of course, you can plot in them. And you can say, okay, sub one dot plot x1. Now, everything we did, you can do for the Of course, you need to write a function, just run to the function, and you can do the same. So you can write a loop, 
and you can generate it. Uh, you, you see this here, it's not very nice if you have money, but they have an overlay for some reason. Typically, what you want to do, I don't know why it's not the uh, you say type like layout, you did type layout, then it looks nicer. You see that's more space here, because you have multi the overlaps. The type layout is really good. So this would, there's also some options you can turn off, you can turn off the labeling just by uh, assigning an empty list. So if you have exactly the same scale for all of them, which is not the case here, because here, then you might just have keep the left one here and the down one here in terms of all the numbers. Yeah, exactly the same. But that's that option. Uh, you can in fact if it's the first column, the last column, the first row, the last row, then you can just so, of course now once we can write the loop, you can generate as many posts as you like. Yeah. Um, I was directed to find the uh, using the same variable on the suffix and I'll write it here. I mean, it seems to work, but I think if you want to access the second part, that might be the problem. I think that's a good I mean, I don't know. Yeah. Yeah. That was a mistake, thank you. Uh, it didn't have the impact. If I would have tried to plot it, you see it with it. So now you could write the loop. By the way, like, or use the generator if you're more fancy, the same thing, you set the group and do everything, the functional style, more or less. But that's something you have to do. So you could just say uh, rows equals two, calls equals three, four, uh, uh, row in rows. In a range, of course, yeah, range, range, rows. The problem is, uh, I suppose kind of zero here to start with one. But with the good simple solution, uh, probably you could say uh, row, uh, row index, row uh, index, and you don't need the row anymore. You can say range, rows. Oh. Yeah, okay. I will give it up here. Okay. Just making this up as you can see. So range, you pick this enumerate, but you don't need browser, then you need to enumerate one to call the plus one. So make a simple one. And now you can and you put in the row in the column, row, column, uh, row, times, column. And now, for simplicity, I thought when all of them the same thing, we don't have to, uh, x and y, and, yeah. and y doesn't pop on the thing. I think it's up to the rows and columns. Like neural. Yes, of course. No, no, that's a plus. The, 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 we, we used row and call in the first two entries, and I think you need rows and calls in the sub function. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Not those ones, the ones left of it, like the first two entries. Mm -hmm. Six. Six, so this should be plus one should be six. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So that's it. Rows. Yeah. So here is all I must be the nine, not six. Rows. So the first two arguments to subplot have to be the total number of rows and the total number of columns. Ah, yeah, the other way around. So, yeah, yeah, yeah. The calculation afterwards is to get the rows, yeah. rows, calls, and that should be uh, a count of. So make it easy now, just for now. So so row, row times calls plus call. Okay, yeah. Row times calls plus calls. Rows. 
add. Plus Load times call. Yeah. Plus call. Load times call. Make it easy. And <laughs> <laughs> make it easy. Zero. And plus. Okay, see, you have to think three away, so if you talk and program at the same time, it's not a way to solution. Okay. But of course, you have to, you see already, it doesn't look nice. So if that's if you want to use your tight lay layout. TRT, TRT, tight layout, red layout. Oops. Yeah, now it's nicer. And of course, you can have a different plot. Look at now, I have different, you look at the scale, now I have different scales. 100, 200, 300. No, it's just not that right, right, right. Of course, you can tell, of course, have different colors. You just have RGB in there, and so this would be something. And if you want to now change it and say, okay, well, I will have a few more rows, and then it should hopefully, yeah. Now we have to fix this. So, you will be flexible, and then, and you can make nice. This would be something typically maybe generate or so sometimes um, using this end you can to generate the next <laughs> next one by the end is generate of the uh, tools count of next do the same thing then uh, that would be okay. But if people don't know what the tools count is then this end generate of the is more explicit. And once you have figured this out, you, now you want to move it into a function. This would be, of course, now something that you can do in function, and you could you can probably have this this, this drop function to use it. So that as next thing. So now make it a bit nicer. So it did, it did say okay, I want to have the plot many rows. Calls and uh, function is uh, still you can have the function inside, but you start to plot it. You call it instead of the uh, But yeah, so but this will make it a little more useful, a little more useful. Now we have the function, yeah, and then I just say plot many and this mass plot many. And these super arguments make it explicit so you don't know about you don't have to map all the rows and scores and make calls. And then you can exactly the same thing, but put it in the function. And now, of course, this is plot, but instead of plot, you could specify what it's supposed to be. So you could say something like this plot equals plot. And then you could do something. Look, at this act elegant. And I should do the same thing, hopefully. Yeah. And now you could say, okay, I want to have a different plot. And then I don't know what would be a good plot. So let's try it out. Stop. Dot. You need something that takes x and y. Uh, Semi uh, log y plot. Yeah. So now we get a semi log y plot, x is 11, 12. Because I am moving the plot, so that instead of using x and y, I, have, I want to have a semi uh, log. Yeah. Now you see the axis is, now my y axis is logarithmic and my x axis stays, you know, because it is. Of course, now you use both, it has to take x and y to use the pile chart, it doesn't know which one x There might be a better way just using a string, but the string has to be something that's available. But now you can just go through all the strings that have the names in it. And you can do a nice 
upstream and see the ports. Something like this, and then we have more details. Uh, yeah? So now you have a kind of reusable thing, and if you want to go part of this new world, uh, you won't see anything um, in a while. Good. That's a support thing. So that's also an access thing. You can test it now. You can do those access that can place across by the line, which is useful if you want to have like a zoom or something. Specify. Specify. Good. So, don't have ten minutes. I have one more thing I would like to show you, which is a bit different and a bit more sophisticated. That's why I gave you the source code. Um, and you want to do an animation. One thing is you can do animations. Uh, the simple thing is if you want to post model animation like the simulation, as I showed you, the simple thing is you save fix, save everything as a PNG and use FMPEG as you can. That's by far the easiest way of doing it. Because an FMPEG has hundreds of options, you can have a bit of frames, you can have effects, and you can have the time between frames, and you can do the sound file, and so on. Uh, but if you want something live, then an animation would be nice. So, Now, let's go to the console, go to the terminal. So inside the console, I have uh, gave this download link. So if you haven't downloaded yet, please do so now. Up there, you will find this animation.py file. But this use case, I just explained the use case, so you can see what the animation is all about. So the thing is, we have this old Fortran program that's numerically fine, but spits out a lot of information to the screen. And one of the information is the residual. So the error it makes and this error should become smaller. And you always have to go to the screen and look at the screen as uh, numbers and see if the number gets smaller all the time. So I uh, wrote a program that starts the animation, program program background, uh, harvests the screen output, and it looks for this number, and then it places the number in the nice So you see this number live moving. So this is a challenge you have a number that's produced all the time, and at the same time you want to display, which is called concurrent programming. And as soon as things get concurrent, it gets a lot of make it more complicated. Post more than indeed, you have all the data and put it in that so here it's a bit more complicated because I want to do something like this. And first we look at the result of the animation and then we look at the source code. It's a bit more involved so um, but you might test it. So if you type Python and then animation and then it should actually higher my environment. And then if you do this, then this one shows up. And this is an animation. <coughs> As you can see here, this is a number of steps. So this simulation steps is shown down here. And there's a residual. And you see it starts with about 10,000. There's a big arrow in the beginning. Then over time, you get an output, and this output is the, the trend is going down, but in between it is one goes up to the top. So you have this, you see this, this one is always changing. Now I'm here at one. You know, the while it will be point one. But I use it also that this is semi log here, so I use a scale. How oh, plenty is easier now it's point one here and so If I have ten to minus seven, I will finish. Since I read the number to the run to run. So this is just an example, but you can do now this. In the background, there's a calculation that gives a number at the same time that this number is created, I plot it. So this is concurrent programming, uh, which you can do with threads, but I don't use threads, I use built in much in So you cannot plot and get the same number because as soon as you plot that you drops, you can win. Yeah. So that's why you need this way to put. But the same principle could be applied for other animations. Like you could have bars going up and down. You could have a software, you could have like a computer. After you can draw anything you want, it's a chain code. Yeah. Now for a while, now it will be finished. Okay, let's have a look at the source code. Everything came out looks like that. You can see how the animation 
works. So you can use an editor, but you can also load the source code. Yeah. Yes, it's load function, load, simulation, which when you type it, the load it doesn't execute, but that doesn't work. Okay. And this is, if you still use Python 2, you should always do this. But this runs with Python 2, but Python 3, I like the new process, it's great process. Okay. This is, a, this is a main thing down here. See, this animation is important for Matplotlib, and I make a fun animation. So I need to provide functions, and these functions will be called by Matplotlib. So that's a typical, typical thing when you do convert programming. You cannot act yourself. You have to give somebody a function that they call a little hard to act for you. Yeah? That's like a callback function. And that's important, but otherwise it doesn't work, because as soon as you say plot show, the whole thing blocks. And I can do anything and do only matter that takes over, and I give it a function and matter that is good. That's what I have here. <coughs> First, I give it a figure, which is just plot since the, the plot should end up. Then I have two functions. This is a function that consumes and then it creates a plot. I have to write myself. And this frames is something that produces the numbers. So if it will post mortem animation, it can be just a list of numbers. So the simplest way would be just a list of numbers. But here we can do it because we don't know the values yet. They will produce on the fly. So I have to give the object that reduces one number at a time. Like in the array, when you say next, you have the next. And then you can specify the interval. Let's say every that's a milliseconds or every second there should update. And that's it. But now the, so all this programming is here. You see, residual and graph are actually two instances. Typically, we use functions, use loads. I don't like loads, that's why I don't use functions. I use classes that behave like functions, which you can do by only call. Then it's more encapsulated, everything has no code, everything is just uh, uh, instant. Yes. And there's no need for this. Actually, code people are not needed anymore, but it's fine to be Okay, so now I have two things. This is just a, a mock. Instead of running the Fortran program, I have this one that produces numbers. And you see I have this call here, which will be called, so it behaves like a function. And this produces just random numbers. It's just some, some functionality, and produces random numbers. And you see here, I, I count, I count to zero, and I go up and down. See, so yeah, I count up once and down twice, because I check if the count is two, I add, otherwise, so that means down, down, up, down, down, up, down, down, up, and I use a random number, so eventually it will go down. And it, the important thing is I use yield because I need a generator here. Yield is something you can iterate over every time you iterate you get a new value. So if there's no new value, it happens. So ask for trying to have a new value. No value yet, I just yield none. This will cause it to be updated. Otherwise, I give it a value. The value is 10,000, 1,000, 1,000, 100. And if I'm less than the limit, I'm it's just, just, just a mark that this would be something more involved that actually checks for the value of the And this would be the plot. And as you here, you see a lot of familiar things. You make a new plot. You know, this explicitly to add up. It's a little bit different than the I, but it's the same thing. You have x, you have count, so you have x and y, which is just at least this one element. The plot is one element, you won't see anything, because this is the same. And then the isolation is a graph. And you see now, you see a lot of familiar. I have the semi log y. So the y axis is semi logarithm. I can type my label my y labels, it is not one. And this is an important thing, the update function. The update function prints out specific. Now just append to a list. And here the list is much better than that, by the way, because you want to grow it over time. And then I just append the counter, so this x gets lower, step one, step one, step one, step one. And then the y, this would be the y value, which would be one value I want to put, I want to see all this possible. And then I make a new plot. You could also update the values here, decide to make a new plot, which rescales everything mathematically. There's a small problem with this. If you have a very long one with a lot of thousand steps, that will crash. But this one is fine. Then you need to update and you need to rescale yourself. Now, return this line, I get back. And it's again for the code update here for update curves. You could have write very important. So this will be called, and this will be updated. So what happens? This guy produces values, 
you can hear them in the value. And this value will end up here. And so, MacroClip is taking the value from one of my functions and hands it over to the other function every second. And I that's it. So, I write the functions that do something, and MacroClip handles data, data thing. Because this is the same, the same principle that we find no matter what. Okay, you can totally change this plotting here, use all the version, make animation <coughs> and annotations, and use uh, the mathematical formulas and anything here. Yeah? And then you just get the value based on the value you change the stuff, and that's plus three, you have a second yeah. so This would be a basic animation, and you can see you can do fantasy. This is something you do right in, in half an hour, that takes you yeah. But this is a, a kind of blueprint, and you just need to plug in your own data producer. So you get to change this to some, something you can iterate over that gives you the value. There are many different technologies. You can generate as one of them, you can use just one iterator, or just a normal list of this. And you need a consumer, which is this guy who actually does that. And I decided to make a class out of it, because it's a bit nice. You can also write this in functions using global objects, uh, but it's not this. <laughs> I was talking fast. Time is up. I'm still around for questions. You have questions to ask questions. Otherwise, I hope you got something out of it and you managed to at least type a little bit too late and bit around. Method is very big, has a lot of features, and you can spend a whole week doing more exercises. But I think you get the kind of feeling how it works and you have the basics. And from there, you go to the gallery, you download whatever it looks like you want to talk, and then modify it and you have something. And you always find the information in Most of them are sort of used global, which I would like. But yeah, it is also could be the same thing. Here's a bit more object on the graphic of the as soon as they know how to ask. Okay. Thank you very much. Uh, if you have more questions, we can do questions after the uh, Otherwise.